Hi folks, today I want to go over uh, setting the preferences for Decoder Pro. Now I'm assuming that you've already uh, installed the drivers for whatever device, interface device you're using with your DCC system. And that afterwards you've gone into the system um, uh, settings and found out which COM port your interface is attached to. Because we're going to need that uh, in order to set up the connection for, for uh, uh, Decoder Pro. Okay, so right off, let's go ahead and get into the Preferences um, menu, uh, which is located under the Edit menu option. You look down here, click on Preferences, and right off you can see that the connection settings uh, come up first, because obviously they're the most important. Now, I have the uh, command station, or the uh, DCC system, um, uh, with the Digitrax DCS240 command station hooked up uh, to the computer today to show you these connections. Um, you can see it's already set for Digitrax, but you could select any of these systems on here. You can see we've got Raspberry Pi, uh, Sprog DCC, I use that occasionally, and NCE if you wanted to use any of the NCE systems. But all the others are here. Okay, let's go back to Digitrax, and we're going to click on Digitrax, and that becomes the um, system that we're going to be using. Uh, the internet connection that we're going to be using, or the um, um, LocoNet connection in this case for Digitrax, is a LocoNet PR3. Now you can use either uh, a standard PR3 standalone, or the uh, DCS240 has a built-in PR3, so you select this, whichever one you're going to use. Now you could also use any number of these. You could use the simulator if you don't have an interface yet, but want to see how Decoder Pro works. Just, cl uh, just click on simulator, and it will simulate a DCC system. So you can go ahead and play with it. Um, you can use any of the local buffers. You can use a PR2. You could use a local buffer USB. So there's a number of different options available to you as far as interfaces go. Uh, moving on down, we need to select the serial port. Now I know it's COM12 for my system. You notice COM3 is also available here as, a, uh, as a, an option, but I, I've already checked the system and I know it's COM12. So we'll click on that, and we're going to go with the PR3 standalone programmer. No, we're going to switch that to the DCS240 advanced command station, which is what is hooked up to the system right now. And once all those are set, there are some additional connection settings, but as you can see, there's not much here that uh, you have to worry about. The turnout command handling is set to normal, and connection uses hardware flow control, which is the recommended setting. So I basically never bother with uh, checking these additional settings. Okay, once that's done, if you made any changes, you have to save and restart the system in order for uh, Decoder Pro to be able to recognize the device that you're using. So let's just wait a second for this to restart. Okay, now you can see the system has restarted. Everything is uh, available now uh, to operate with the DCS240. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other items under preferences that you could uh, might be interested in. Uh, defaults, uh, these are just the standard defaults for LocoNet. Uh, file locations allows you to uh, set up user file locations, so you could change that and define whatever one you want. Uh, you could have multiples, you could have one for you, one for your club, one for a friend, um, various things of that type. Um, startup, I never use this. Display, uh, you can choose which Windows uh, type of display you want. Windows Classic, Nimbus, Metal, Windows, and CDE Motif. I just stick with metal. Uh, font size, uh, sometimes it helps to crank this up to a little bit higher value uh, so you can uh, see better what's going on. Uh, a non-standard e re release event for a mouse click, I just leave it the way it is. And a tool tip display, you leave that at four seconds. If you want longer to read whatever the the, the tip dis the tool tip is, uh, just increase this, and uh, every one of these, anytime you change any of these, you're going to have to do a save and a restart. And on, on my system, it takes about a minute and a half to two minutes just to restart uh, Decoder Pro. 
um, various messages that come up when uh, you're doing things. Um, most of these, it's always ask before you do something. Um, roster, which locations you, uh, you, you're going to use for your roster files, and also the default owner name that will be used automatically when you uh, are entering data into Decoder Pro. Uh, throttle, this is for the virtual throttle that you can use uh, to test out your, your uh, changes to your decoders. Um, the Y throttle, that's for the wireless uh, throttle you can use with your uh, with your cell phones. Um, various configuration profiles uh, for different um, railroad names that you might use. So there's the standard Jimry Railroad and my Piedmont Southern. So you can change those and decide which is active. The railroad name, uh, Piedmont Southern, I've got in here. These various other uh, servers are something that um, you probably will never need to use unless you start doing some fancy uh, programming and interfacing with your layout, say. Uh, the web server, just leave that alone as well. And warrants, these deal with um, various settings for our uh, panel pro. Okay, I'm not going to do a save because it would take several minutes in order to restart the whole program. Um, so that's about all that I want to cover today. So that's all for now. I hope this gives you a better understanding of how to set the preferences for Decoder Pro once you start uh, using the system. Uh, come on back and take a look at some of the more videos that we'll be uh, putting up here in the next few weeks.